Welcome back, my friends. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Brawler 64. You may be saying, dude, you've already looked at the Brawler 64 plenty of times. No, this is the USB version. Oh my God, I've been sitting on this for a while. I misplaced it. Holy crap, I'm a little behind with this, but I think you guys still may want to hear my thoughts on this. So we have to do it. So this was sent to me a while ago um, from Retro Fighters for purpose of review. And that is what you're going to get from me today because I have a lot to say about this thing. So I've been using it quite a bit, really been digging Retro Fighters stuff. Uh, this controller, I'm, I'm a little mixed on, uh, but it's really going to depend on what you're using it for. So I'm going to explain that in a moment. PC, Mac, or Switch. Today, we're going to be demonstrating it on the Switch. And I also have, yes, we're going to be getting back into this stuff, my friends. I know a lot of people have been hitting me up, but we have a Raspberry Pi 4 right here. Um, we're going to be using it on that as well. So we'll go ahead and take a look at all that in a moment. But here's the box. This retails for $29.99. Like I said, PC, Mac, Switch. Uh, you can use it on pretty much anything that uses USB, but it, it just, you know, could be a little iffy depending on some things here. Uh, it's just the way the controller is, the layout, that kind of stuff. You may have to accommodate with special... Uh, you know, inputs, just setting things up differently. But there's the back of the box. Uh, you guys aren't a bunch of kids, so I'm not going to read this to you. You want to read it, freeze frame it, but there you go. You guys know all about this stuff. So, boom. Also comes with, I already took it out, like, and it was a bitch to get it back in the box. So I'm not going to, like, box it and then unbox it. Like, what the hell, right? But it comes with this little manual, uh, some social media stuff, customer service. I think you get, like, a one-year warranty if you buy one of these. Pretty good stuff. The goods, the setup, we ain't worried about all that. Um, pretty much just explains a few things that are of importance. The macros, that's the biggest thing uh, of importance here. It explains what the buttons do for each system that you could use it on. D input, X input, PS3, Mac, and uh, Switch. So you could switch between X input and D input on PC by pressing and holding the C up and the C right buttons for five seconds. So this is some important stuff here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate this on the Switch real quick. Um, but here it is. comes in this nice little tray. Um, I have no idea how they had this cable in here. Like, I can't put this back in the box to store it. I don't know. Like, did they have this, like, origami folded? I have no freaking clue. But I'm not even going to bother. Oh, my God. It's in there tight. That's what she said. Um, but here it is. So the main difference between this and the original version is obviously no Crap, dude. Uh, we don't have a memory pack rumble pack slot. And then the other thing, too, is that this controller does not have rumble motors in it. So that is one thing to keep in mind, uh, especially if you're using this on the Switch. No rumble motors. We have a long, and I mean long ass cable. I believe it's 10 feet. Now I got to look at the back of this thing. I don't even know if it says, but it is a long ass cable. No, it doesn't, doesn't say back there. It, it, it's, it's long. It's long. Um, you guys, you guys get the idea. Typically, they're doing like 10 feet on these things. I'll find, you guys know, I'll, I'll double check. I'll get out the, uh, the, the, the measuring tape, check it out, and put a little overlay on the screen saying, hey, this is how long it is. Um, but it's pretty damn long. You're going to be good. You're going to be good. Instantly pairs, plugging it into the switch. Um, I don't know if you saw that there, but let's go ahead and talk about this a bit. Come on, man. Let's, let's, uh, there we go. We gotta, we gotta readjust a little. That's, that's all good. So here, here's the controller. The, the wonky thing, um, using this on the Switch is like, how could you really do this, right? Um, so the A and B self explanatory, like, boom. All these buttons, they feel great, mind you. The, uh, the analog's good. The, the D pad feels good. Your triggers, it's a very light controller. I kind of do wish they would have waited this one. Um, like they've done a few of their others, because this one is a light controller, but it does it, it feels comfortable. It feels fine. Um, but back to with the switch here. So my 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 issue is is if you're playing games on the switch that you cannot configure the buttons, this is not gonna be a great option, in my opinion. Maybe for you it will be, but for me, it's not a great option for the switch. It's neat that we can use it on the switch if they ever like like how they have this, the Nintendo Super Nintendo. If boom, they have one for the Nintendo 64, this is going to be the shiz right here. But in the meantime, it's a little weird. Like the start button 
is actually the home button. Then I believe C up and C right um, is the, the, the plus and minus. So we'll go ahead and get into, um, we'll get into Super Nintendo and just kind of showcase some stuff because then I think like this is X and then this is Y. Um, the turbo and clear, those buttons work on the, on the Switch just fine. You could set turbo to any of these buttons you like. But let me go ahead and show you like, okay, if you go on here and you want to play some Super Mario World, good luck, man. <laughs> good luck with this controller. Um, the way it's laid out, it's just, it's, it, it is what it is. Like I said, this is, this is just opinion. Some of it could be subjective. Some of it to me is fact. I just don't feel like this is optimal. Like, as you see, like I have to use C left to run and then like hit over with the butt cheek of my thumb to hit the B button. Um, it's, it's just not, it's not optimal for, for this. I think if we hit both the uh, Z buttons, uh, we can go out. Um, yeah, I mean, we don't have controller options here, so it's kind of, it, it sucks, man. It doesn't work that great for the system. Start button is the home. Um, I don't know how else they could have done that here. I guess it's just like a bonus that it works for the Switch. Like I said, eventually, if this, um, if the Switch winds up having Nintendo 64, this could be pretty cool. But then again, Nintendo is going to be like, no, you can't, um, you, you can't configure your buttons or something stupid, right? Guaranteed they'll do something dumb like that. And then, like, I mean, so it's kind of just an iffy thing. You, you know what I mean? Playing NES, uh, I do want to say, so you got to hit that, that start. That's the start button right there. Playing NES with this actually feels pretty good, especially with the, uh, the way the B and A um, are laid out. It actually feels pretty, pretty damn good. So that, that's, that's a good thing here. I'm um, using either the analog or the the uh, D-pad. Like any game that you play on here, 3D game or any of these old school games, all these buttons respond well. It's just the layout is not optimal for me for these types of games. So there's that. We're going to go ahead and switch on over to the Pi 4, demonstrate a little bit of uh, Nintendo 64 emulation with this. We will be doing a whole separate video on this. I, I can't wait. I, I just I really want to get back into the retro Pi stuff. And we're gonna be we're gonna do a review on this case, this whole hat thing. Just stay tuned for that. But I'm gonna go ahead, pause this video, edit it out so you don't see all the nonsense. Plug this in. We're gonna get going. So let's do it and shut up about it. Okay, so there we go. You, you see that we got we got her plugged in to the Pi Four here. Really awesome. Let's go ahead and uh, get back up in there. We'll be doing a review on this image too. Um, I don't know how old this image is, but it is a Pi 4 image, and it is pretty damn neat. So let's go ahead and check out let's check out uh, Mario 64 real quick. Let's go ahead and jump into this. Um, oh, crap. I got some drift going on. I think because I was touching it or something. But there we go. We're good. Unplugged. Plugged it back in. The drift is gone. Okay. Okay, so I have some like wonky assignments. I can go in and um, change that stuff, change it around. I'm not gonna bore you with all that. This will be for another time, but um, I am gonna change something here. It's like, I don't have my Z button um, assigned, so I'm just gonna assign that to something real quick. Um, the cool thing is, is you know, just changing things up, make this more comfortable for you with all the different emulators and stuff that you could use uh you know you can get pretty creative with this controller so there is that all right we're good now like i said you can change this up however you like pretty much um depending on the emulator you know this might not be optimal for n64 it's not too bad um but other consoles that you'd want to emulate you may have to get you know, just a little creative with this. Where this really shines is going to be for using this on PC emulation for the Nintendo 64. Um, that's really where a lot of people are going to love using this. 
just you know popping it in okay i want to play nintendo 64 let me use this controller that kind of thing uh, i think a lot of people are really going to appreciate it for that but for me uh like i said i, I have to be honest this is a, a good controller um in my opinion it's just not a versatile controller it's not like an xbox 360 controller um being able to be used for any console pretty much being you know the way you can change things up and assign buttons uh with this this controller you know being a nintendo 64 controller it shines playing nintendo 64 son of a bitch no koopa the quick i should have paid attention oh my god um but <laughs> that, that's my fault crap dude he's 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 got one up on me there damn it's gonna be the first time in my life that i've ever lost the koopa the quick um, but what I was saying was, obviously, this is going to really shine for Nintendo 64 emulation on the PC, on, you know, any, you know, any device that you can change the buttons around. Um, you see, I'm, I'm, you know, I have the jump on the C down right now. Um, actually works pretty good for me, but I could go back in there and kind of manipulate things a little more if I so chose. But uh, through like emulation station and whatnot you got to get creative because you don't have like a select button here. So like the clear and turbos or the turbo and clear buttons, they, they work just fine as far as like, you know, assigning turbo or, um, as you see, I'm just, I turbo jumped. Um, that stuff works fine, but an emulation station, you're going to have a real problem, uh, you know, getting creative with this controller, trying to set up uh, hotkeys and whatnot. So I, I had to point that out because these aren't registering as their own separate buttons. So you're going to have to like, what, what are you going to use to select um, as your hotkey? Oh my God, this is so embarrassing. I lost the Koopa the Quick. What a dumbass. Oh my God. But there you go. Um, my review of this, not the most versatile USB controller out there. Great for Nintendo 64 emulation if that's solely what you're using it for. Shines on the PC, not so much on the Switch. It's okay on you know retro pie to an extent um just you know you're gonna have to have to come up to a decision if you're interested in, in this controller you know what i'm saying it's it's okay it's okay for what it is nintendo 64 controller right i mean what 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 else can i say so hey uh i really do appreciate you guys hanging out with me and with that said i will catch y'all next time peace out big ass thumb butt get in there Bye bye and boom boy